Hello and welcome back for another VOD review. This time we are doing the Florida Mayhem taking on the Toronto Defiant. I feel like we're always on Ilios. I don't know why we always start on Ilios. Just feels like that. Um, obviously the Florida Mayhem have been struggling. Struggle Town to say the least. Uh, I'm actually going to bring them up on uh, Liquipedia here. Let's have a look at this because it's pretty... Their last six matches... So their last six matches, or I guess seven if you go all the way back to May Melee when they lost to uh, the Dragons in the qualifiers. They, their last five matches, they lost to Houston, Dallas, Washington, Toronto, and now Boston, right? So obviously Houston, Dallas, Washington are all good teams. And this was in the June Joust. But they lost to Toronto and Boston this weekend, which is, for Florida's standards and where we put them, is just awesome awful for them so they've been really struggling as of late their last win was against the london spitfire where they won 3-1 so frowning town is a good way to explain it Ms. Liz. so they're in frowning town um they're just been really struggling they are leaning very heavily on this winston anna style of playing the game interesting enough for this series we actually got checkmate coming in here john was uh jo john johnny was elated he was he was so excited to see his boy checkmate didn't really do so hot. He did okay. He has a great first opening fight, but other than that, has didn't really perform that well. We didn't see him here in the second series that they played against Boston. For the Toronto Defiant, though, they've just been really firing off on all cylinders. I think they had a 2-0 weekend, if I'm correct, uh, about that. They beat Mayhem, and they also beat... Boston? Titans, that's right, they swept the Titans. I casted that game. That When people will say like, oh, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. No, I'm just stupid. I casted the game. So um, that, that should pretty much summarize it up for you. So uh, yeah, Toronto beat, uh, beat uh, Vancouver in a pretty convincing fashion. Got two full holds on first points for the most part. So they've been really good. Most notably, Aspire is back, signed for a 30-day contract. He will be in here for the uh, entire much, summer money. showdown for the, uh, Florida, uh, for the Toronto Defiant, sorry. And yeah, he's just been he's just been popping off, especially on this tracer. I think he's really been impressive. He does have a hit scan. He do, is very flexible, as people have said. We just haven't seen it as much in the league. Um, this is going to be a good tournament for the Defiant. They have you know they can play Sato on the Winston with Lastro on that Ano. Really great synergy there. And then Hisu is also able to flex over to the Sombra, something that he's really known for. So it's a good tournament for Defiant. Florida Mayhem not so much. This is a banger of a series, though. It goes to a map five. It's going to go back and forth. So let's uh, just get started and start having a look at it. Congrats on winning Bren's Player of the Week for your casting debut. Oh, thank you. Did I... Did, I didn't realize that was a thing. Love to see it. Why didn't they give it to Johnny? Well, did they give it to me and Johnny for our casting debuts? I thought I started. It didn't start. Because I think Johnny did a great job as well. Do you think the Defiant is overrated by barely beating a weak Mayhem and the Titans? I think uh, the Toronto Defiant is a great... They're like the new gatekeepers, right? I think Toronto Defiant is the middle of the pack team that I don't think is ever really going to win anything impressive. Even if they make it to the playoffs, I don't think they're going to do very well. Uh, I don't think they can beat the top end teams, but I also think that they generally beat every team below them. So they are the gatekeepers of the middle of the pack right now. I think that's fair. Anyone who's like hyping them up and be like, Toronto can win it all or Toronto can do it. I just don't see it. Like they're solid, but they're not great. And I think they're going to, uh, they're going to do pretty poor. So your comparison means Mayhem is bad. Mayhem is bad right now. It's just the reality of it, right? I'm a big Mayhem simp. I really like the Mayhem. I think Yaki uh, is incredible. I think it, when they can play their style, they're really good, but it's just... They're just, just not translating into matches right now, so. So, yeah, I would say Toronto is the new Atlanta. I think that's a great way of putting it. Going on 5 does that to you, exactly, right? Like, if you go on 5 in a season where there's only 16 matches, something's got to give at that point, right? Capture the objective. Doesn't, yeah, and that's it. Like, Florida's one of those teams that could easily pull it together at the last second in the season and do quite well. So we're going to see uh, pretty much a mirror, except for the Hisu is on the Sombra and Checkmate is on the Echo. So we'll see the differences between those two. I actually don't know which one is better. I think Echo can have way more upswing, but Sombra can be uh, can be pretty impre it can sort of like disrupt the opposition. Great first dive by the Florida Mayhem playing fast. Last ring gets isolated on the high ground. 
Gargo will fucks on Sega, on others not so much. And I think that's a, a, a theme for a lot of these players, right? Like, I think... I think Michelle's really good. Like, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I'm I'm talking about, like, both teams at this point. Like, I think Michelle's the same. I think Michelle's Diva is really good. Everything else I'm not really that impressed by. OG's Winston is really, really good. But I don't really like his Reinhardt or his Orisa. Like, I think those are by far his best things. Like, Slime's Brig, I don't think is as good as his Lucio and stuff like that. I think they're very focused. And Yaki is... So good at Tracer, but I think everywhere else, unlike on some other roles, I think he he struggles to hard carry like he does on Tracer. So. Michelle Zai is statistically top three. The Watson statistics I haven't really had a ton of faith in just yet. But also, you say that, that that's top three was like, who else is playing Zaya? We haven't seen that much Zaya this season, so it's kind of hard to have that. Like, I can't even remember the last time Michelle played Zaya. That was a really good engage and disengage by the Florida Mayhem. If they can get Slime out, that was a really good play. And then they go again. Like, Mayhem are really playing, doing a great job of going back and forth, applying a ton of pressure. And then the Yaki dip, right? He gets that Pulse Bomb on the last row. Great isolation. Gives Florida the edge on, on the on this map again. I think he played a lot of Zyre against Atlanta when they reverse swept, and that that would explain why he's top three, right? Like if he played one really good match on Zyre, then that would e easily put you at the top of the list, just because of how little Zyre has been played. So Nano, Nano on the checkmate. Spy gets a Grace Pulse Bomb on the slime. A Spy's Pulse Bombs, I would think, would say is the most impressive thing about his game. His Pulse Bomb, the number of times he sticks a support is just like astronomical. It's so impressive how many Pulse Bomb kills he gets. Especially to open up fights, right? He's doing, it's like legitimately just a straight up solo play, so. MP's not very good here. Like, it doesn't really help them in any way. It hits both tanks and the brig, but the rally's running, so it's not really going to give them a ton of value. So not a great EMP by Hisu. Wow, he, I, that looked like I should have stuck the brig. Trying to get the cap, but... It's going to be pretty short-lived. The Spire's going to have to do some crazy work to get through this. Just the dives, I think, were way too coordinated by the Florida Mayhem in comparison to the Defiant. It felt like the Defiant were always on the back foot. And that is the weakness of playing the Sombra instead of the Echo. The Echo gives you consistent damage and pressure on your dives, right? While Sombra really needs to get set up, needs to get a hack, needs to get in, in like in, in the right spot. And that can be so, really hard sometimes. And you just saw, like, he still only got one EMP. Other than that, he didn't really get much impact. And even the EMP wasn't that impressive, right? Did Aspire get a real contract? Um, no. He's he's still on a 30-day contract. Is Zaya so shit right now? Is Diva just better? Diva's just better. Is the is the is the big thing. Zaya is really good, but her biggest weakness is that she's isolatable. Very easy isolatable. Like she the only defensive she doesn't have mobility. And the only defense personal defense that she has is her bubble, which she needs to use pretty liberally to get charged. May I ask what your take on Hisu Somber is? I thought the casting was a tiny bit harsh on him. I do think he has room to improve. Was I harsh on him on my cast for a Sombra? I don't remember. I don't think it was, was it? I, 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 didn't he dominate against it? What did I say that was harsh about Hisu Sombra? 
Oh, you're talking about in this series. So this is like Sideshow and Mitch. Right, sorry, I was thinking back to when I was talking about Hisu. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't remember what was said uh, about those guys. We'll, we'll break it down, but... I don't know. I don't like it when people... Don't, I'm not going against you, Darrow, but it's like, I do think he still has room to improve. It's like, we're in the Overwatch League. They need to win games right now. He's doing he's doing good. I think Hisu Sombra is by far one of his better heroes. And I think he's good, but he's been in the league for a couple of seasons now. He needs to be the one who's like really control, taking control of these games, getting value. And we expect better from him, right? If people, if we're being down on him, it's usually because we expect better. And we expect big things from Hisu on the Sombra. He's considered one of the best Sombras we have in the league. And that's why like that EMP that we just saw on that well, just wasn't very good. It was late to the fight. It hit when a rally was going. It hit the tanks. It's not going to be a high value EMP, so... So exact same comps, let's see what happens. Oh, that was dangerous, but he's good. Good damage, good constant pressure. Right there. And there honestly wasn't a major difference. Like, look at the old charge. There wasn't really a big difference between these two teams there. I think Defiant just managed to uh, keep control quite well, and then Slime got isolated first. Yeah, my bad, I didn't clarify it. True, that's a valid point. It just means there are high. Ex it just means there are high expectations, and that's it, right? Like, you will very rarely see us talk shit, and you you need to keep this in mind, right? You will very rarely see us talk shit about a bad team or a bad player, just like when they make these bad mistakes. We might like jest a little bit at it, right? But that's fine. You'll you'll know when we are the harshest critics. When you see us say the harshest things, that's usually because there's very high expectations, and we expect bigger things from these guys, like. It's, it's important to like, you know, we don't really go hard in the paint and we're not really rude to players and that kind of stuff. But, you know, we're in the Overwatch League. We expect big things from a lot of these players and they, they're expected to be better than the casual, right? So. I'm glad I can help, Dar. Oh. And does it again. A spy does it again. His pulse bombs are so good on these supports. Talking about EMPs, let's have a look at this one then. I think Florida Mayhem is playing way too grouped up, considering there's an EMP coming. Like they they, they have to know if they're gonna make this rotation, they're gonna get EMP. The EMP is actually really good, right? So as much as this EMP doesn't it only hits three people. It's really good under the idea that it splits up the front line and the back line. OG gets hacked in the fr uh, going into the back line, and he was also isolated a lot of people over here. This is just going to get OG killed, or at least make him run away, and that's just a great isolation. So as much as it didn't hit a lot of people, that's a great EMP by Ehisu. That's a bad late death. He hit three really good people, and that's and that's what I'm saying, right? Like, he hit three people with the last one, I said it was really bad. He hit three people with this one, I said it's really good, right? EMP is a very hard ultimate to use because finding the window and finding the timing is very, very hard. And you gotta be careful about when you use it because it's not about the number of people you hit, it's usually about the when you hit those people, right? Winston. Checkmate takes a Winston. Good hack. Late rally by Slime. This should give them a massive advantage here. It's going to be really hard for Define to win this one. Define have no ults in the bank. I I'd love to see them disengage. Great nade by Gangnam Jim. Yeah, they just need to get out of this fight. Oh my god, he's almost got him. That was not bad by a spy. He, he's doing a good job. Define's doing a great job of disengaging from this, though.
Does the MP uh, break Brig Inspire? No, it doesn't. It just stops you from using abilities. I don't know. It's very weird how it works. Do you think Florida should have kept uh, Chris for the Brig roll and signed for the Lucio? No. No, I don't. As, I, as I've said previously, I don't like switching out your main supports and that kind of stuff. I think Slime's Brig is fine. Like, I, it, I don't really notice it a whole lot, but it seems fine. EMP on the backline. That's another good EMP. Just isolate the backline. Oh, good counter bomb, though. Another great EMP from Hisu. Just winning team fights, right? Every time Hisu uses an EMP, they usually win the fight. In this round, so. I look, Chris was underrated. Well, Chris. It's very easy to underrate Chris because Chris was a meme. Like, Chris was not good. Like, and I. I know sometimes we can be toxic, but Chris was not really not good in 2019. 2020 he actually made a lot of great improvements not mainly because he didn't have to play a lot of Lucio But he actually looked really good on the brick and that kind of stuff But they really tried to avoid him from playing Lucio and when he didn't have to play it his mercy and his brick were fine Like they were good. His Lucio just wasn't very good um, So I think I think he, he did a good job of like redeeming himself, but I would still replace him, right? You really need a good Lucio In 2021 you need a really good Lucio But Slime, I think Slime's a good player. Like, I think Slime is still riding off of the hype of being on the Vancouver Titans, right? In 2019. Uh, but I think he's been fine so far this year. Like... Like, he's doing his job. I think Yaki thought he touched the point. I think he thought he touched it. Like, he was dancing around it. Alright, did Mitch actually say shit on cast? I thought he was saying check, and then he... Because he was saying check, he like, but then the C9 happened? Like, I thought he said shit as well. I was like, he said shit? Has he, has he admitted it? Because like... You know this is a dicko mode? Ah. Classic, classic. Mitch can get away with a lot. Mitch is, Mitch is great at what he does, right? Mitch has, a, I think, a lot more leeway than a lot of others because he is so valuable to the league. Job security pog, yeah. Like... I feel like Dicko Mode is lit. Well, it is his name. And that's what that's how Mitch would get it, right? He would say, like, well, his name, his in-game name is Dicko Mode. Because that's Yeah's uh, in-game name, right? It's D Dicko Mode, right? <laughs> Hisu gets Gangnam Jin. Checkmate, checkmate gets run down. Well played. Mitch has insane vocabulary, not even that, but he strings it together into sentences on the fly, and that's what makes Mitch great at what he does, right? Not, there's very few people who can do what he does. No. Oh, shit. Mitch is also super fit. Yeah, well, that's neither here nor there, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, true. How's playoffs going to work this year? I don't know. They don't tell me things anymore. I, I can't help you on that one. I'm sorry. When you know, I'll know. And I, I actually prefer it that way. I hate being told things and not knowing. And then like everything blurs together. Of, did somebody tell me this? Or did I see this on Reddit? Or did this happen? So that's why you generally see, when you see me talk about things, I'm like, I saw this on Reddit, right guys? And then you guys are like, yeah. 
because that's me checking if I'm like, did somebody tell me this or did I see this on Reddit? It'll blends together. Mayhem is going a little too aggressive with their dives right now, right? Like they're just going, they're just diving for the sake of diving. I don't really... Nano under slime to save him from the, uh, the pulse bomb. But the rally from Anson J is going to be a problem. Slime uses the rally if he dies. This is really bad. So that cost them rally. That cost them nano. That cost them pulse bomb, right? Toronto only have to use their rally and their pulse bomb. Now they have the EMP. Mayhem don't have an answer to this EMP. It's going to be really hard for them to do. Oh, sorry. Do anything in this fight. Was it Custa and Saichu leaked the Toronto roster? I've never leaked anything from Toronto. But Florida look tragic right now? Yeah, yeah. Florida definitely don't look that good right now. And here's, a, here's another prime example of my famous quote that I love to use time and time again. The fear of the EMP is better than the EMP. That is what the Florida Mayhem are dealing with right now. They're trying so hard to like, look at how scared they are from Hisu. And Hisu knows it, right? He doesn't want to go. He doesn't need to go because Florida is just waiting. Oh, how does Anson J die for free though? How do, how do they get the back line that easily? Did you ever leak anything? No, I've never leaked anything. Oh, that just seems way too easy for Yaki and OG getting into the back line. That was way too easy, and now they get away, they get away with murder because no ult to use. All right, well, we ne <laughs> the fear of the EMP sometimes does not matter. He's gonna toss this in. Mm. All right, OG's going very early. Oh, he got hit. Well played by Slime. That's a great catch by Slime. They're getting forced back though. EMP. Just EMP the Winston at this point. I don't know why he's so for, he's so enamored on the back line. If he just if he EMPs the Winston. And like the D.Va or the Tracer, like that's a win, right? Like just don't let him primal. Like I don't know why he's so focused on... He's, he just keeps getting forced away. I don't... Alright, well Aspire fucking does it again. And this is what Aspire made. He did the same thing against the Vancouver Titans. He just gets picks with this Pulse Bomb so well. Bro, EMP! <laughs> oh, got him. <laughs> yeah, got him! <laughs> they were so afraid of the EMP that it just never even mattered. Live watching and taking notes. Lip's like, wait, you can just hold on to your EMP? I thought you have to press Q when you come out of stealth. That's so weird. <laughs> Lip would have had seven EMPs in that time. He would have hit only three people with all of his seven EMPs, but he would have had seven EMPs. And that's what makes Lip impressive and unimpressive at the same time. We had some clutch eats on Diva this weekend. Yeah, he's had, he had a couple of good ones. It's called Balance Custer. He can't be too strong. It's just not fair for the other teams. All right, so what do we got here? We got 
the exact same comps. We got the exact same comps, the Winstons, but they're both playing. So actually, Yaki's playing Echo while Aspire's playing Tracer. I much prefer the Aspire Tracer than the Yaki Echo. Slime's doing a pretty good job of like being, like trying to slow down these backliners of the Tracer and the Sombra. OG went too aggressive. Yeah, OG, OG went too aggressive. Oh my God, look at this nade after this as well from last row. But I think this dive by OG is... Oh wait, we need to go further back. Look at this dive by OG. I think this is... I don't know why he felt the need to go aggressive on this corner. Like, and to the point where he had to jump. So he like... He like... So his Sombra just disengaged. I don't know... I don't know if he was supposed to short hop. And he just fucked it up. But that... Like, look at how far he goes. Into the back line of the, the Defiant. So he gets bashed instantly. He doesn't... He's getting healed like crazy. But by everyone trying to save him... Uh, that, like, that costs them a lot. And then look at this thing. Look at this nade. Bloop. That's a problem. An enormous fucking bio nade by Lastro. Sweden throwing. Johnny in shambles. Huge. Great play by, uh, by Lastro on that one. Gargoyle needs to eat those. Well, the thing is, like, it's funny that you say that, but that, the, that's why I'm, I was criticizing OG's jump so much, right? The reason I was criticizing OG's jump so much is the reason he, uh, that happens is because I think OG goes too aggressive, right? Look at this. So he gets hacked, right? But then OG jumps in. He goes, oh shit, I need help, right? So he, he goes in, he protects OG the whole way through, right? Uses every bit of Matrix. Because he does that, he goes aggressive using that as well and the nade hits. So that, it's a compounding effect of what OG did. Sweden got a red card. Oh no. How, how far into the game Where, did he get a red card and what's the score? That's the real question. Because you can get a red card in like the 80th minute and it's fine. It's 101 minutes. Oh, that's not bad. So they're in overtime then, right? So you can, you can make that work. All they have to do is hold off to, to make it to penalties, right? Yeah, they just got to hold off for penalties. And then it doesn't matter that they got a red card. Alright, Isu. Trying to get value out of his EMP. Trying to hold off. Alright, OG goes deep again, but it's not nowhere near as bad. Oh, he gets body blocked, but... The EMP is actually enormous, but this might be one of those where it just came at the wrong time. Aspire does get the cleanup under OG, though. That's a trade. Oh! Good play by Aspire and Hisu. That's just great teamwork right there. They go to extra innings before penalties? Well, I assume if they're in the 101st minutes, they're already in the uh, the overtime. Like, they're not in... I assume that's not in extra regulation time or whatever the fuck it's called. Good nade onto Ansun J. It's a good counter dive by... Uh, they nano Yaki to try and get... Uh, to save that. Mayhem's got to be careful. They're committing a lot of ultimates here to try and get the hold this point. That'll show him. I hate Nano Echo. I don't mind Nano Echo. I don't like Nano Echo in this composition, in the mirror of this composition. Because I think Nano Echo is good if you're playing against like heavy tanks where you can just beam down tanks and stuff like that. But I, I, I feel like against like Tracer Sombra, it's very hard to get value sometimes. How does Sato get slime? Oh, Slime just got low with no heals. Then Gangnam Jids get attacked. Florida is getting staggered like crazy. I really think Yaki needs to go Tracer. Like, I don't know why Yaki is feeling the need to play the Echo. Like, I think the Echo is just harder than it's worth. Just play it, just mirror the Tracer Sombra. 
Did you see this Houston tweet? Might be a big announcement tomorrow. What is this? Let me, let me just look at this real quick. Might be cool. Might mess around and create a new esports team. Wouldn't it be cool if it was announced tomorrow? Contenders team? From the Houston Outlaws? That'd be cool, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. Houston Academy? I don't know why they would make an academy team though. Like, as much as it would be cool for them to have an academy team, I don't see any reason why they would. Like, it's just a bad business decision. All right, so we're going into this last fight. We got Rally v Rally. It's gonna be a brawl on the point. Sato needs to not die. Where's Lastro's Nano? They nano Tisu? Why is Hisu nanoed? What just happened? No, no, the, nano him. Oh, he is, he is the nade on. Oh, they, he should have nanoed him way earlier. He wanted to hit Sato and then he ends up hitting it on the Sombra. That's not really going to help them. If that hit the Winston, I think they'd probably win that fight. We shall force it, not gonna lie, yeah. We, we talked heavily about that, about how I hope in the future, going into Overwatch 2, the league can sort of change its rules a little bit and hopefully force academy teams in some capacity or something like that. Some Renato sounds cool though, that is true. That is true. All right, so we got the, we have Yaki on the Tracer now. We got Hisu with the EMP. See what Hisu can do with this one. I, it might be smart to have an I, and I, I was actually just about to say, if I was the Houston Outlaws, the best time to get a Contenders theme would be sign American Tornado, right? I think if you sign American Tornado and then you just guarantee a lot of those players to be able to like, lock them into your roster for the future might be a good idea. Why would you consider, why would a Contenders theme be a bad decision? Is Overwatch Esports not pulling enough money? Uh, all right, let, let me just go on a tangent real quick in this, just to sort of uh, say this. Uh, so here's my thing. So let's say, I don't know how much Contenders players are paid, right? Let's say each Contenders player is paid $1,000 a month, right? It, when they're assigned to a Contenders team. I actually don't know what the number is, right? Let's say it is $1,000 a month. That seems low, but here we are. Um, contenders doesn't get paid that much. Uh, so that's, you times that by six. That six times 12,000 is like, you're paying like 70 grand for a Contenders team, right? How much money do you think Contenders brings in to your roster? It's like, none. Like they get, they don't really get massive viewership. They don't sell anything. You can't do it and that's it. So it's like, it's not a good, like, the only way I think you get ROI is if you have buyouts, right? And you get, you, you get great players and you get the buyouts and that's the payout, right? But the biggest issue right now is that players, contenders players probably aren't signing contracts. So that if you were, I don't know, maybe players aren't that smart, but if I was signing a contract for contenders, I would say I want at the end of the year going to the Watch League season that I don't have a buyout. That's what I would want because I don't... <laughs> Like, if, I, if they want to buy me mid-season, then I have a buyout. But if they want to buy me at the end of season, you don't want to have a buyout to your name. So, and that's just the way it is, right? Contender, and that's why it's a bad business decision, because you're not going to get any money back on your contender's investment. The only reason you would have a contender's team is if you thought it would be valuable to have a contender's team so that it would make your main team more money or be more successful in the future, right? That's where, that's where you would be adding that investment. A lot of teams had academy teams, historically, uh, that just ended up folding because teams didn't find, think it was worth it. And that's why it does seem weird that Houston Outlaws are getting a contenders team. And then that leads me on to another idea of the only reason I would ever see Houston Outlaws getting a contenders team is if they are already un with the understanding that going into Overwatch 2 and in the future, they're going to need a contenders team. So they want to get in early, right? So it's like, maybe it's a future play, don't know. I'm just fucking spitball and throwing it at everything at the wall, but it would be interesting. Even Runaway, yeah, and that's a great example. This lecture just said, Runaway is not profitable. There's a reason Runaway ended up folding. They were the most successful contenders team in the history of all contenders teams, right? 
they ended up folding. And the biggest reason they said is there was more money in streaming than there was in having a contenders team. It's just not profitable to have a contenders team. Unless you're, all your players stream a lot, but if you have a successful contenders team, then they don't really stream that much, right? So... <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So the EMP by Hisu is very underwhelming. Let's go back to it. Could it instead be a different esports? There is no reason the Houston Outlaws would be teasing another esport. That's a really weak EMP. I guess it isolates slime, but it probably shouldn't have. I feel like Gangnam should have been able to heal him, but here we are. But it, it's, it doesn't help them enough, I don't think. Just, uh, the Florida Mayhem have so many ults to be able to hold this point right now. Could it be in a... Yeah, it, I, it, it won't be in a different esport because there's no way Houston Outlaws would... But what, Houston, if, if it was Optic or whoever the fuck owns the Houston Outlaws these days, if they were teasing another team, that would make sense and I wouldn't think it was Overwatch. But the Houston Outlaws, there's no reason for the Houston Outlaws to tease another game from another team because they're only an Overwatch franchise. Bentley something? Yeah, I, I don't really know who's, who owns the Houston Outlaws anymore. Oh, uh, we got it. EMP in the room from BQB. Hits three players. And a pulse bomb. Ooh, the EMP pulse bomb from BQB and Yaki. Kind of spicy. Kind of lovely. He's always doing a good job of getting more EMP, though. He's at 70% to a new one. Optic is not Houston Outlaws, is it? Not anymore, no. Optic doesn't exist anymore, right? Actually, doesn't it? Didn't Optic come back in some capacity? I actually can't remember. I can't. I can't remember what happened with Optic. Optic's such a COD brand that I don't really know it. Yeah, they they own they have a COD team, right? Didn't they buy back and they have a COD team now or something? No, he, he uh, Spy was just signed for one month. Optic is under NRG. Yeah, I'm not really sure. So. Oh, okay. So you see this? I was like, what is he doing? He's looking at the translocator, right? So they're trying to find. They're waiting for BQB to open up, right? So here we go. We're going to see how this works, okay? So he comes out of stack. Uh, health. Uh, Invis. As soon as he comes out of Invis, it gets called by someone else on his team. He's who shoots it, right? He's who shoots it. All of a sudden, he doesn't have a translocator. A spy runs him down, right? That's that's the play right there from the Toronto Defiant. Perfectly executed. BQB gets got. I'm concerned about Leaves and Yaki's backs at this point. Hey, that's fine. Leave and Yaki are chilling. Healthcare is not necessary for the absolute chads. Okay, so we got Nano Winston. So a pretty good EMP, not a great EMP. Oh, actually, compared with the bomb, it's actually quite good. Oh, it forces the whole team back to the point. They're just really struggling to close out this fight. No way is, the, is Toronto... Uh, not going to be able to get these kills. Damn, dude. They just can't kill anything. They have great pa uh, uh, hacks. They got uh, all of the Florida Mayhem low. They just couldn't fin uh, follow it up. If the MP catches the Winston, yeah, it would be a different story if the MP caught the Winston. If Brig lives, the team lives. Yeah, exactly right. So it's just like, it just a couple of little things went wrong and that's why it went awry for the uh, Toronto Defiant. So let's see how the Florida Mayhem attack this then. Toronto didn't really look that good. Toronto's fine, right? Like Toronto's a fine team. They're good. They're good middle of the pack team. They're not they're not incredible. They're, you shouldn't be overhyping the Toronto to find at this point. This is a great win for them, but it's not you know, it's not like, oh my god, Florida's a top four team and now Defiant beat them, so now Toronto's a top four team. That's not really it. Like Toronto Florida doesn't play that well. And Toronto, you know, only just managed to scrape the win. They had a 2 weekend, yeah. But they played Mayhem, who didn't play very well, and they won in map 5, and they beat Vancouver Titans. So it's like, it's not an insane 
weak for them. Alright, so OG goes in. Gets peeled away. All that kind of stuff. I don't really like this plan from... Gangnam Jin gets forced in the end to walk across the, the way and the backline just gets absolutely smushed against the wall. They get the trade onto the other back, the rest of the backline, but I think Toronto should have this because of they, their heals died later. Um, but the question becomes, can Florida reinforce fast enough? Doesn't seem likely, especially with Gargoyle losing the mech. Like... No, we still don't have breadsticks. There are still, to this day, no breadsticks. Oh, last year goes down. Yaki doing his best. Aspire. Whoo! Nice. That was clean. I feel like Yaki just like hard carried that. Great dive by the Florida Mayhem. Pass into the ass. Who do you think will win Paris or Shock? I'm going the shock. I think the shock wins like 3-1. I think I think Paris is being overhyped at this point. They are very, very good. But I don't think Shock has a performance like they did against London again. I think if if I'll put it this way, right? I will be very concerned for the San Francisco Shock if they have another performance like they did against the London Spitfire. People people seem to like forget. Right? Alright, we're going on just tangents left and right. I'm sorry if you are really invested in this body of you because I'm just all over the place right now. Uh, no, go away. I, I ended up... Uh, shock. I accidentally opened Twitch so you heard someone else's stream for a second there. Um, people seem to forget that the San Francisco Shock are 8 and 2, right? They're still 8 and 2. And their four losses that they've had throughout the season just because that you get losses in the qualifiers and stuff like that is to the Houston Outlaws, the Dallas Fuel, the Atlanta Reign, and the LA Gladiators. The San Francisco Shock has still not lost to a team that they really should beat. As much as it was very close against London and they lost to the Gladiators, I don't think the Shock are going to make the same mistakes that the Gladiators had against the Paris Eternal where they didn't adapt. I think the Shock are great at adapting and I don't see them having back-to-back -back terrible performances as well. They went three and two against London and Atlanta. Yeah, but Atlanta's really good. We know we know we know Atlanta's really good. So that's not Atlanta's not that crazy of an anomaly, right? And I'm I'm not saying the shock is like one of the best things we have in the league right now, but I'm saying they're at least better than Paris. Um, there is there's definitely a chance that Paris wins this series, right? Like, don't get me wrong. If Paris plays just as well and they play really well, and the shock don't haven't worked out a lot of the issues that they've had. Then yeah, I, I I think there's there's good possibilities that the shock can lose this, but I just my my right now I'm giving the San Francisco Shock the benefit of the doubt because they're the two-time champions. They have great players. They still have cross. They still have a lot of great things going for them. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. If they lose to the Paris Eternal, then I will have lost a lot more faith in the San Francisco Shock. I don't think Atlanta is that good. They're an Arissa one TP kind of team, kind of. No, not at all. What do you mean? They 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 just they just played a tournament where they were one of the best at the uh, the Winston uh, Lucio Moira stuff. Like they were really good at that composition. Yeah, their Arissa stuff is very good, but they're also very very versatile. 
Yeah, and like that that's with Reinhardt being out of the meta as well, where Reinhardt I would say is one of Gator's best heroes. So it's like They're definitely very good at Ryan as well. So I, I actually think Atlanta's one of the things that make me the happiest about Atlanta is I think they're one of the most versatile teams we have in the league. Alright, great push pressure by Arnson J on the BQB. Let's get back into this review. OG gets low. He's gonna be forced to primal here. Are they gonna nano? What are we doing here? Okay, they, I guess they don't want a nano. I forgot the cards that far back. It's actually pretty well played by OG. They gave him a ton of space and positioning. EMP hits the backline again. Interesting that BQB seems to really favor, uh, like, prioritize the EMP in the backline. I guess it works. Ooh, that Hisu EMP is not very good. Hits the Sombra and a Primaling Winston. I guess it might isolate BQB. Ooh, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, it was not a great EMP. Alright, Hisu goes down. Aspire gets Gangnam Jin, dude. Aspire is just terrorizing the backline of, uh, of the Florida Mayhem. It's very impressive, like, how much work Aspire does coming as a rookie into the season, into this team, into a team that has five Korean players. I'm sure communication is probably a lot harder than he's used to playing with, but he's, he just makes it work, and that's awesome. Imagine a Spire on ping. It might be like Kevsta. I thought... I thought a Spire had good ping. Does a Spire not have good ping? He's in NA, right? Yeah, he, he's fine. Oh, sorry, I just got confused. Like, for some reason, I was like... Spy's not European, right? No, he's not European. And I was like, well, is the Spy a... I was like, is he in a different place? Maybe he's West Coast to East Coast, but that's not that bad on good servers. Sato gets Gangnam Jin. The rally comes out. Doesn't, from Slime, doesn't really get a whole lot of work. Toronto's doing a great job of holding this right now. From what I know, Michelle and Ansuj are the only ones who struggle coming with a spy. Probably because those guys have very low amounts of English because neither of those have been in a like in a Western team before. Like Sato and Hiso and Lastro have all been on Western teams, right? So wouldn't surprise me that Michelle and Ansuj probably don't have great English. And a spy doesn't have great Korean, right? So I'm sure that's probably an issue. They go around cleaning up kills together, yeah. I'm sure like Sato's probably a great player. Like he's obviously played for the Philadelphia Fusion. We know he's a great main tank, he has great communication, so I'm sure the communication from Simsato really helps Aspire. Again, dude! How many times is Aspire gonna stick a support? Oh, he didn't even stick him. Slime really should, probably should have lived through that one. Thoughts on Slime? Slime's fine. I think Slime is fine. Oh, good EMP. Gets, uh, catches a spy with that one. Oh, Sato almost killed somebody else. Yaki coming alive though on this tracer. The Yaki diff right now. Has to be on Gargo. Eh, it's a little bit of Gargo, a little bit on Yaki. Yeah, the Diva can't just be like hovering around your backline at all times, right? Oh, dude, that's the second time that Lastro hasn't healed Ansun Jay. <laughs> Where they're like running away together and Ansun Jay just doesn't get healed. Oh, that was a great prediction by Lastro. I, I was about to praise... Yaki for jumping on the bar, the uh, cause you know he's about to throw the sleep, right? Everyone knows the sleep is coming. I would have I would have thrown it right where his cursor is right now. That's a great prediction to throw it on top of the dumpster. This will 
only hurt for a minute. We're getting close though, we're getting down to the wire. On plat chat, Jimmy reinforced that Jimmy was overrated. Boom! Jimmy's been uh, Johnny's been watching my stream. He's been watching my content. Or he's he or he did his own research. But I'm glad that Jimmy is standing up for the people. Jimmy had a really good weekend though. This is probably the worst weekend to say that Jimmy was overrated though. He put, he put, uh, I guess he, he was okay on Hanamura, but he he was really good on that gym. That that is by far the best match I've seen Jimmy play. So we got Rally from uh, Slime on the point. This is gonna be really hard. Defiant needs to get their ultimate. So they're now to the Winston. Anson J needs to get to this Rally. Oh, a spy goes down. EMP goes out from BQB, hits a lot of people, but there is a rally out, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Sleep on Desato is really big. BQB goes down. Oh, Lastro is in trouble. They need to keep Lastro alive if they can. Prime by OGE. Good eat by Gargoyle. So to get slime. This is so back and forth. Yeah, damn. Dude, Toronto was so close to holding that. That was such a good hold by them. Damn, that was really close. That was really close. Jimmy had some really clutch moments on Hanamura. Uh, he, well, he had a couple of good uh, good moments on Hanamura, yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's go to Jim. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers in All right. This is where Hisu never EMPs. Oh god, I'm looking forward to that. Hisu's on the McCree. I don't. Oh, I don't really know how I feel about the McCree. Out of everything, like I would uh, defensive widow, defensive Ash, maybe the McCree. I don't understand. All play Sombra. Like I don't really understand. Like I don't think he wins against anyone. I don't know what the McCree is supposed to counter. Yeah, like, I don't... Yeah, and, like, as you just said, what, how come Kree and not Ash? I don't know. Like, I don't... I don't know what he's trying to get out of this McCree. Maybe he knows they're going to play Wrecking Ball Tracer. But if anything, I'd, if I'm playing against Wrecking Ball Tracer, I'd rather have an Ash that just sits on the high ground. Oh, Spy gets buffed by BQB. Think you profit from picking up a Spy? Um... Teams like your Vancouver Titans, teams that don't have a great tracer, like Toronto would benefit from that. Um, but they have logics, right? Like we talked about yesterday, like who would you rather have, logics or Aspire? And I honestly don't know what the answer to that is. Obviously, logics is more tried and tested, but I think Aspire has more of an upside, right? Like Aspire could be better, right? Like this is his rookie season, he could just keep getting better. While Logics, we sort of know what you're going to get from him. He's a very solid Widow. He's a very solid Tracer. Um, but Aspire has been really popping off. So I, I don't really know. I think if I was picking up someone, if I was the Toronto Defiant, I would stay with Logic for this season. And then next year, maybe switch it up. But they, they should have... Nice on Tracer and Aspire and Ash. Hisu has always been their hit scan player for this season. So I don't see Aspire picking up that McCree role. I the way I th uh the way I think Aspire is gonna like at least how he's fundamentally playing is this is kind of how Striker would play, right? He's their tracer player. That's his primary role. He's just there to play Tracer. If they need him to play hit scan or something else, he can. But for the most part, he's playing Tracer. Um Hisu is the somber McCree player that is uh for this team. And then I remember the FRD beef. I don't think there's really that much beef there. Oh, good stick by Yaki. Aspire Rookie of the Year. I feel... I also think that Aspire's performance is being blown out of proportion. Like, it's great for a rookie player. But he's still not anywhere close to the levels of, like... I know you're joking, but, like, uh, people actually believe this, right? He's still nowhere near the performances of, like, Shy and like uh pelican and stuff like that right like 
Aspire is still in the Toronto Defiant at the end of the day. Rip Sweden. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, Alarm 1 Rookie of the Year last thing. What about Khan? Yeah, Khan is a good shot. So they've lost positioning. Hisu goes down to to Gangnam Jin. <laughs> nice play by the uh, by the Mercy from Slime. Mines go down. This is just almost impossible for Toronto to hold at this point. What happened to their EMP? I'm actually curious. I missed it. Oh, he didn't have it in this fight. Okay, never mind. Gaga rookie of the year. I don't think Ga I think Gaga in the main melee was very good. I don't think he's had anywhere near of a good rest of the season. I think Piggy's a good shot as well. I think Shy Pelican Piggy are, are really good shots for rookie of the year. Oh yeah, that's right. He just switched from Kree. That makes sense. Um, I was like, uh, I was like, when did he use EMP? And then I remembered. Yeah, that's right. He's on the Kree. Flora, no. And like, here's the thing. Like, a lot of people say names, but like. You, MYX, like, Flora's been good for the team, right? It's the same thing with Aspire. Aspire's been good for the team, but he hasn't been the best person in the league in their rookie season, right? Like, that's... that They're, they're by far... Like, neither Flora or Aspire are even close to that kind of pedigree, right? So... Dan's the tank. Did I say Dan? I meant Khan. If I, was, if I said Dan, I meant Khan uh, for the rookie of the year. Oh no, you're talking to Slytherin Sam. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Khan is the flex support, Don is the tank. Why are Defiant in this room? So they rotated around. Like, let's let's watch this again. Yeah, what's up, avoid burb? So they come out. They get their respawns, okay? They're gonna go bottom right. They're going bottom right. Here we go. They're taking such a long time to get set up. They're gonna go all the way bottom right so that they can get a good opportunity. Then they're stuck in this bottom right room and they don't leave. Like, they don't... What are they... Like, they're just sort of staying in here and they, this gives the window to Mayhem, right? To just be like, okay, let's just stuff them in here. The rally eventually comes out from Unsun J, but it's probably just a little bit too late, especially with the trance from Gangnam Jin. That just gives the Florida Mayhem so much survivability. Yeah, and that's this is like, I would would you say Watchpoint Gibraltar just as like a whole as the point, not just one part of the point as a whole, is one of the hardest points to cap in the game. Uh, and they just forward to walk through it like it was nothing, right? Like, they, you need to do a better job of taking fights if you're the Toronto Defiant. They're just a little too slow and they just got punished for it. Who do you think would be the MVP this year? As of right now, it's, it should almost certainly be Fearless. Shy was the best Ash for like one weekend that he was way... Shy... Shy has been incredible for not just one weekend. Shy was incredible throughout the entire June Joust. Uh, and a late into the main melee. The, the reason you don't think that is he didn't play the first like half of the main melee. Like he really just like didn't really get integrated for the first few uh, few weeks. And then there's only been, they've only played six matches since then. Right? So he's actually been popping off for a while. Every, he's, yeah, he's he's had like one bad game. I agree. But I think that bad game was because the, the Spark were playing really shitty comps. Like I'm pretty hard to impress. But that was shy fucks. Like, don't get me wrong, shy fucks. Also, I love this from BQB. <laughs> Shy's not MVP, Callum, but well, he's not gonna get MVP. He's gonna get, he's like, he's uh, argument for rookie of the year, right? If Shy has a re really good rest of the year, he's definitely in the contention. All right, so we're gonna see Sato engage with the primal. Kind of hard for him to get anything done. Hisu's EMP needs to be the next big one. Oh, Sato dies. 
I oh that would have been a really good EMP. I don't really know why he didn't press that. Lip is my MVP. I think yeah, Lip is a great uh, uh, MVP. I also think uh, Leave has been really good, but he's just, he's on a bad team. I don't know why he didn't EMP there. I think that would have been a great EMP. Because now he, oh, that's a problem. Oh, he shouldn't have gone for the manual hat. He needs to, uh, yeah, he needed to just press it, right? Like, he's waiting for that perfect moment that's just never going to come. Like, they were staggering so much that they really needed just something to give them a little bit of footing. I can understand why he didn't press it, but he needed to press it, right? He held it for close to a minute, yeah. This is why the cast were talking about Sombra, and I think that's completely fair. That, that criticism was pretty, pretty reasonable, right? Like, so he started on McCree. Like, if you think of Hisu's round there, he starts on McCree, doesn't really get anything done, switches to Sombra, doesn't get anything done. They lose the second point, he finally gets EMP, and then he just doesn't use it on the third point. Hisu probably had, like, negative impact in that round, right? Like, if you could see his stats in that round, I'm sure it was abysmal, right? And that's... So I think the criticism is fair there, right? Like, we... He soon needs to be better if the Defiant are going to, like, win this map. Mayhem won that so convincingly because He soon was on McCree for some reason and then didn't get any value once he switched to the Sombra, right? Created this, like, massive snowball. He just throws here. What? Sometimes things go wrong, right? Like, see, sometimes things just go wrong for you. It's not It's not a slide against Hisu. It's just he had a bad round. People have bad rounds. It's not the worst thing in the world. Like... Sato gets punished for trying to go aggressive. All right, so, and this is why the BQB, like the, when we were talking about the Ash Mercy, I actually kind of like this. Lastro switching to the, the Moira is a throw. They're going to go Lucio Moira on Gibraltar? Against Zen Ash? How are they, tra how are they planning on closing the distance? Like, how do they... I don't really know how this works. I don't really like that BQB's chilling here, though. Yeah, Yaki gets the pulse one. Yaki is gonna be a mega free. Well, okay, Yaki, calm down. Yeah, I don't like this Lucio Moro at all. Like, they're, they're going all in, but they're just... They just... They're, the Ash Mercy Zen is just going to put out so much damage, and it's going to be so hard for Defiant to get on top of them, right? Like, if Defiant can find a window to get onto them, then all the power to them. But I just don't know how they they get away with this. Oh, Gargo gets hacked. That's a good hack, but they should be fine. Gangnam Jin's going to get a Transcendence as well, so he's going to have a Get Out of Jail free card. They forgot they had W keys? I don't know if it's they forgot they had W keys. They just, I, I feel like they're just always waiting for that perfect moment to engage. And they just can't find it. And this is why a lot of people don't generally play the usual dive. They usually add a hit scan in some capacity to give you some form of pressure or some form of off angle, right? Because the issue that Defiant are having right now is they have nothing to keep Yaki under control. They have nothing to keep, like, BQB from just free firing. They have to close the distance somehow and just hope that they don't die by the time they get there. EMP onto the, uh, onto the Flux, which is pretty good. Gangnam Jin gets the Transcendence off, though. Okay, they should have good positioning here from Toronto. This is going to be their best bet. Oh, I don't know about that Cole. I guess they have people lined up for the dive. Okay, not bad.
Okay. So they're gonna try and get these final kills. They're not gonna be able to get them. Who's gonna be out of touch? I guess OG's got a free touch here. OG's got mines as well. Ooh, this is a problem. Good slam. Oh, slime's dead. Good play with the hack. Michelle dies to the mines with the bomb. Oh, BQB gets last, bro. Okay, I thought that was going to be a C9. I, I, I could feel it. That should have killed Hisu, right? That 100% should have killed Hisu. Interesting. Like, he just like slammed onto the point. Guess the slam got blocked by LOS. So he was like hiding under the cart. Uh, yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of bad. That shouldn't exist. Anyway. Where does C9 come from? C9 is is exactly the organization that you're thinking of, Cloud9. They had a team back in like 2016, 2017, when we, they went to Apex. The C9 team, they, they had two really bad C9s back in the day so people just memed it as that's what being a c9 was was getting off the point in a winnable fight like not doing the objective in a winnable fight and losing because of it three yeah i think it might have been three there were two really bad ones and a third not as bad one if i remember correctly yeah sure four was on that team sure four menda kusai Ki uh rib uh adam roof Rolf was on that team as well. Oh, Hisu, great dive. Wow, Defiant also doing a phenomenal job of controlling space and getting that second point. Stopping the mayhem from getting set up on their defense. Oh, losing Lastro is a problem though. Losing Lastro and Sato, that's probably going to put an end to it and Mayhem should be able to stabilize it. And Gods, yeah, Gods was the last one. Titans Rolf, yeah. Rolf was originally on the C9 team that popularized the word C9, yeah. Didn't realize Cloud9 never went to Apex. Yeah, they went the same season that we went. Yeah, uh, that this that season, uh, it was Fnatic, which was my team. It was C9, uh, Envious, Misfits, because Johnny was also there that season. Uh, in in Korea with me in Apex season two. Then there, because that we got a ton of Western teams got a ton of invites that season because Envious won up last season, right? So they were like, oh, let's invite all the Western teams. They're the best teams in the world, right? And then, then our West, I think every single Western team bombed out that, that season, right? Apex season two. I think Envy made it to the, out of groups. I think they might've been the only team to make it out of groups. Out of all of us. No, Rogue, Rogue was that year. Yeah, they were in that reason as well. Is he, is he and he, he EMPing anything? He had four with that actually. He actually hit all of these people over here as well. So yeah, that was a good EMP for the most part. Oh, this flank by... BQB is a big problem. I don't know how that hit for. Oh, what the fuck was that? Okay, rally from slime.
Okay, Defiant do not have a lot to get in there. I really don't like this Lucio Moira. I think they're, gonna, they're struggling. I think this is just such a hard composition to, like, move around the map. And, like, I understand that, like, this is what was played la in the last tournament. But I think with Tracer, ba Tracer and Sombra back in the meta, I feel like it's way harder to make this work. Because the reason the Lucio Moira, like, brawl was good, like, you just rush at people, is because everyone was having to play together. But now that Tracer and Sombra is back, everyone's just all over the place. And I feel like it's really hard as a Lucio Moira to, like, isolate targets. Pulse Bomb, Primal. Yeah, there's no way Toronto's getting this. And this is the reason I'm a Dallas Fuel fan. That and living in Texas. Yeah, well, I was at, yeah, the reason I signed with Dallas Fuel was because of Team Ambius, and then that didn't work out very well. <laughs> but we don't talk about that anymore. All right, on to the next map. We are now 2-1 to the Toronto Defiant, right? Wait, or is it 2-1 to Mayhem? No, it's 2-1 to Mayhem, right? Because Mayhem won... Yeah, 2-1 to Mayhem. They won Gibraltar and Hollywood. That's right. That's right. Ready for battle. Five. I thought it was a June Joust thing. So did I. I don't think Lucio Moira is very good. I think a lot of teams came in trying to play the Lucio Moira because that's what they learned from June Joust. Like, they're just like, oh, fuck it, this worked in June Joust. Let's keep playing it. So I think a lot of teams just came in with that mindset and then they just... I just don't think it's very good. I think the Anna Brig is way better. Now that Tracer Sombra are back in the lineup, I just don't think the Lucio Moira is anywhere near as effective. Yeah, it, it, like, Lucio Moria, I think, is definitely good. I think it's better with the Reinhardt, if you're gonna just play the Reinhardt. Like, I don't think the way they switched to it in Gibraltar was good. So, Defiant are gonna play the Brig Anna Ash Tracer. I don't hate it. Against the, the, uh, Sombra Tracer from the Mayhem. Yeah, it can work with the Reinhardt, exactly. Like, you, there is times in which Lucio Moria can work, but... Oh, nice bot by Anson J. Playing very counter divey. I feel like Toronto is giving up way too much position right now, though. Like, they need to... Like, they, they were playing counter dive, but they literally just got sent back into a room by one Winston. Oh, a spy gets the kill on a Yaki, though. And they're going to clean up. Nice play. Who's the teammate you were closest to in Dallas? Um... I was kind of friends with everyone. I wasn't super close to, any like, anyone in Dallas. Even in the Valiant, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a very personable person. But. I don't know, like, I consider everyone friends, but I'm not, like, super close friends with anyone from either of those, uh, from any of those teams, right? Okay, so same thing again. The Winston Dives, they're playing into the room. I don't know why the Defiant are diving this. I don't think they need to. Like, they're, if, they're, if the Brig Anna are just going to play in this room with the D.Va, let them. And yeah, just go run down Hisu. Like, this... This seems like a really weird situation where they're like, Hisu's playing on a, an angle, not with his supports. Spy is just murdering everyone, though. Doesn't matter. Another one. Not Kariv, not Brady. Like, as I said, like, I was friends with Kariv and Brady. But I'm not good friends with Kariv and Brady. Like, I don't talk to them still, like, I think. Like, I would consider Brady a friend. Same thing with Kariv. If I ever saw them, we would hang out. We would chat like old buds. But I'm not good friends with them, right? Like, I'm not... Kariv and Brady are great friends. I'm not that with either of them, right? And I think it all stems from me being older. Like, I'm just, like, an older person. Like, all those guys are younger and stuff. Lieutenant Gala, thank you very much for the 30-month streak. Boop. They need to deal with Aspire. Like, Aspire is literally just doing whatever he wants. Oh, Slime. Slime's got to be careful. Like, I think Slime is playing well, other than the fact of how he's dying to all these pulse bombs. He's getting, been getting stuck, but also just like, even when he Aspire misses, Slime's just like, somehow keeps dying to them. 
What's Brady been up to anyway? I think he's streaming, right? He's he's a streamer for Toronto, if I if I remember that correctly. Not doing a whole lot. Okay, Defiance doing a pretty good job of holding. They need to do like I think Yaki. Yaki needs to do a better job of us. Someone needs to deal with Aspire. If Aspire is just able to stay here time and time again, they're just gonna they're just gonna be fine, right? Like they, I don't even know what happened elsewhere. The BQB threw an EMP, and they hit someone, but just didn't get any kills. That's because Aspire is just taking so much aggro, right? I like that Toronto actually has Canadian streamers. Well, they tried to pick up a Canadian team in 2020, and that was just an awful decision. Trying to pick up a regionalized team is not a great choice because, like, they just so struggled so hard. I think Sato went too early. I guess it forced the rally. You take those. Oh, he got hacked. There, there you go. That's how you deal with it, right? A spy gets punished, and they, that should probably mean that it should be wide open for the mayhem. They have the ults for it. They need a nano there, Winston. They just need to go. Like, just nano Winston. Jump, jump him over. Three, two, one, go. <gasps> he didn't get the, 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 the... Oh, come on. Just nano him. Map number, this is map number four. Spire gets caught again. So I called it. Shut down a Spire, you win the game. You heard it here first. Florida's very upsetting this season. They have been. They have not been very good. They were pretty good in the main melee. Other than that. I'd say they won without Nano. Yeah, but when you're going into an overtime push, I think you generally just want to use the ultimates, especially a fast one like Nano. I think you EMP the front line here, right? Yeah, I EMP the front line for sure. Great call. Oh, great nano, counter nano. Onto, onto the Spire. That was really well react, uh, reacted to by the Defiant. Spire, man. I don't know what is in his pulse bombs, but he just doesn't miss. I, I would be curious to know how many times Aspire has pulse bombed a backliner in here in just this weekend. Because it's just such an important kill. Even if he trades, like that's still a dub for him. I think the Florida uh, Florida's read on the meta has been quite bad. I don't see. Here's the thing where I disagree with that is I don't think that's true. I don't think the read is bad. I uh, Flo, uh the. LA Gladiators and the Toronto Defiant are also playing this Winston Anna Brig comp. Like, I think a lot of teams are playing these Winston comps. And it should be, theoretically, Mayhem's bread and butter. They got BQB on Sombra, Yaki on Tracer, OG on Winston. I just don't think they're playing well as a team. Like, I, I, I don't think... I think the meta isn't... Like, if, even if the meta isn't optimal, right? It's like they're losing to, to Toronto in a mirror. Like, obviously, Yaki played a little bit of Echo at some point, but for the most part, he's been playing that Tracer. Like, it's not like they're, they're... It's not like they're... Someone else had a really awful read on the meta, and they just lost because of it. Um, Who was it? Who am I thinking of? Washington? No, that's a different one. Let me find a four. I can't remember who it was. But yeah, someone had a bad read on the meta recently and just absolutely fucking botched it. Glass is Genji. Spark. Eh, kind of. Maybe it was Spark. No, no. I'm talking about in this tournament. I, I can't remember who I'm thinking of. But yeah, like, I... Even, even if they do have the wrong read, like, the, I think there's a... They should be doing better than they are. So I think something else is going wrong other than just the meta. Have you reviewed London Shark? Yes, that'll be getting uploaded to YouTube after this stream. Alright, so now to Winston, rally be rally. Toronto's doing a good job of staying alive. Great flank by Hisu. Spy gets got. 
Oh, the slime nano brig. I will say Gangnam Jin has nanoed a lot of people that haven't been that effective, right? Like, I feel like if he just nanoed Yaki and OG more, they'd be fine. But I feel like Gangnam Jin saves it so much for saving people, right? And I feel like it costs it, like, as much as it kept the brig alive and it might have worked this time, I feel like it's cost them a couple of times where they just don't have the damage, right? It kept this person alive, but they don't have the damage to, like, close out the fight. Foreigner has way too much player talent. Do we question Kuki? Nah. I don't think so. I, I feel like... I just don't think their players are performing that well. Like, as much as you say they have talent, like... You know, a, a lot of us question, like, I don't think OG's been having a great game. Like, he's been fine, but he, he hasn't really, like, been super impactful. Like, Gargo, I haven't really noticed a whole lot of either. Like, I think... I just don't think that they're all for, like playing to their best and they're not playing on that kind of stuff and sometimes teams just get worse right sometimes their coordination might not be there it does it just feels like if yaki doesn't go sicko mode they just lose the game no this is my last uh review for the day I love OG, but it's pretty mediocre, yeah. And I, I, I wonder if that's like a synergy and a coordination thing that's going on right now. As I said, the, you know, Gangnam Jin hasn't really been nanoing OG a whole lot. OG has always been questionable, yeah. OG's one of those players, like, in May Melee, everyone was like, OG's insane, right? He's one of the best players in the main tanks in the league. But one of the reasons we always question OG is like this always happens to him, right? Like he has great tournaments, and then we go to the next tournament and I think he really struggles. So consistency has always been the biggest issue for OG. I'll be doing bad reviews again tomorrow, avoid bad. So Nano and Desado should hopefully Force a lot of positioning. So when I talk about this again, once again, Slime has been nanoed because he went fucking deep. Right? Like... I, I don't know how many times Slime has been nanoed this series, but it sounds like three or four, right? Next weekend will be amazing. Yeah, and it's it's going to be really interesting. I think we don't have a great read on the meta just yet because we haven't seen Shanghai Dragons play. We haven't seen Dallas Fuel play. We haven't seen a lot of these really, really good teams play. And I think that will really be the determining factor of like where do these teams actually stand. Okay, so we got two four-man EMPs both onto the back line. Gangnam Jin gets punished. Where's Slime going? <laughs> he just like ran into the back line of the Defiant. I guess he was worried about everyone behind him, but... Yeah, I don't know why the, the, the it feels like the Florida Mayhem are going way too aggressive. Like they're going through this choke way too much when they'd be better off holding the choke and then counter dive in their backline, right? Feels like they they sacked their backline in that fight and then went aggressive themselves. Like I don't know why they felt the need to go past the choke and use the EMP themselves. It didn't really feel necessary. You doing preds? I can do that. Yeah, I can do my pickums after this. People have been asking for the pickums.
All right, so we got Rally coming up from the Toro Defiant, trying to walk up. Counter Rally from Slime. Sorry, I had to look at something. All right, okay. Neither team really losing anything. As long as Sato doesn't die, then Nano Sato posts. That should give them a lot of positioning. Great hack on the Gargoyle. Like, somebody explain to me why OG doesn't get nanoed up here, right? Like, why is OG not getting nanoed in, in, onto the second floor? This is like, ah, uh, just, this is fucking a Win nano Winston dream. He just jumps up. But. What? <laughs> what? Does he get hacked at the last second? He did, he has primal. They have nano and primal, and there's neither of those get used to try and recontest that space. So now they've lost everything because they don't have the Winston. So now they're gonna have to contest the point against an EMP. I guess BQB has his EMP. Oh, I don't like that. This EMP, yeah, this EMP is... And here's the go, the benefit of going second, right? His EMP is just so much better. Oh my god, they're gonna get away with it. Are they gonna get away with it? Yeah, they're gonna get away with it. Oh my god. I get... Uh, they, I, it cost them the nano, the EMP, and the bomb. Damn, that could have gone so much better for Toronto if they had just... done a little bit more. Alright, Florida doesn't have a lot going for them now. They had the OG Primal. Finally got nanoed. Yeah, he got nanoed and he killed everyone. Plot twist. Nano Winston's pretty good. Alright, Florida's going early. With the, with the monkey primal. So it looks like OG's trying to body block. Worked pretty well. Gets Lastro. Looks like he's going to get Unsun Jay. That was, a, that was a good aggressive play by the Florida Mayhem. Didn't cost them a single ultimate as well, right? Like, they used so many ults in that last fight. Get, winning that fight with no ults is so important. They now have the rally. They have a lot of things to deal with, the issue, uh, with what Mayhem are going to bring at them. Really? At this point, Florida should really win this map. Like, this, sh this series should be over. If you're the Florida Mayhem, like, how do they throw this away? They just play smart with their ultimates. They should just win this. It's a score. 2-1 to Mayhem. Okay, we got another nano under slime to save his life because a spire just gets another one. Look at this. That is very fortunate that Gangnam Jin nanoed him. But they, they're going to lose a lot of their presence because they can't nano OG, right? So that's Rally Nano and they don't really get anything. They trade the... They, I guess they trade Primal and the Rally for that. Okay, so now they should be able to nano Sato in. Oh god, they caught Lastra with the EMP. Okay, okay. So now they're gonna have an EMP nano wizard of their own. I would actually kind of like to see Florida go early here. I don't think they want to take a straight up fight against the Defiant. If they let the if they let Sato just get nanoed and just dive them, they might lose their backline. Like I would like to see them go pretty fast. Like I would love to see them go now, right? If they just went with their primal diva bomb, I think there's potential that they just like win the fight. Like look they're giving up too much space. Feeling 
Nano Sato, yeah, Sato's just in such a good spot. Spiastic Slime again. Okay, good play. Oh, wow, good play. I don't know why he jumped out of the bubble. Bubble breaks anyway. It, it does it. You're all right. It does break just before. If it was gonna break, yeah, but you're better off staying in it and hoping it doesn't break than jumping out of your bubble. Like he 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 couldn't go anywhere else. If he was going to try and jump away from it, he should have gone this way, right? Obviously, it's like hard. It's easy to say in hindsight what you should have done, but... Yeah, Lastro's... Wow, Gangnam Jin is very free up here. Oh my god, an OG pins. Well played by Sato. They almost got away with that. Alright, what do we got? Overtime, baby. Oh, Defiant. The oldest trick in the book. This is a great play. This is a phenomenal call because they know that Florida's, Florida's probably not ready for this, right? And they definitely aren't. They do not have the composition to deal with this. Who is pressing their ultimate button? Oh my god. OG they got a much primal, money. but he just fucking just murdered. Holy! Chippers! Casey Case, what is up? Thank you for the tournament. bit. I think this is definitely a TP to the top of point, drop a wall kind of thing. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Drop the wall, drop the wall. Wait, 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 what are we doing here? Oh, that. Uh, I don't, I think they should have dropped the wall first. Like, I don't know why he, he, he waited for so long to drop that wall. I felt like that was a bit of a bait from a spy. He like baited his team onto the point. EMP would have broken, and that's what all I'm saying is like, if he had just dropped the wall earlier, I think they probably would have got the EMP out earlier. Like, I think he should have just... He was trying to get, like, the perfect wall that ended up being a bait more than anything. Ready for that. All right, so... Funnily enough, the Mayhem do the exact same thing. I'm surprised Defiant didn't come out on Brawl. I would have come out on Brawl on defense i don't i think if you just play brawl and you hold the choke i think they have a better chance of winning right all right so mayhem do the wall uh over to the top left Trying to isolate Unsun Jay, they're gonna get him. Oh, they left Gangnam Jin behind though. Whose fault was that? Like, why does Gangnam Jin get left behind? Yeah, he just gets caught. 
So as much as they chase Unsun J, they also like they left behind Gangnam Jin. Oh, then they get BQB. Oh no. Point? Yeah, I think Florida should have played to their win condition. I think they should have stayed on the point. Like, I think just playing on the point would have been their best chance of winning. Obviously, chasing down a f support is, is enticing, but I think it was just too much rotation. Oh, that's a really good nade on OG. Nano on Nasado. Nano Winston, baby. Slime's fault? No, I don't. I just think this was a bad play. If you're playing against Tracer, Sombra, Winston, Diva, and you're playing a comp that's gonna run across the point when you have Defiant completely surrounding you, your support, your your bat's gonna die. I think it was ill-advised to run off the point and chase someone down. You're better off just staying on the point, playing your brawl better than they can. Like, cause like the Sombra, Tracer, Winston, Diva dive isn't gonna win in that small area, right? It's pretty coin flippy, but I think you're it's a better chance than them running off the point. Yeah, just turtle on the point. Hope they get a hope they get a window. Hope they get some ultimates for before uh Hope they get a good wall, get isolation or anything like that. No, we haven't watched Charge MYXL. I think Charge MYXL is gonna be tomorrow's match. How do you feel about Atlanta versus Justice? It'll be interesting to see if the Justice have bounced back and Atlanta, it'll be interesting to see if they still have it. So now we go into the final round. We got Toronto versus um, Florida Mayhem. Doom Symmetra versus Junkrat Sim. Oh, which one's better? I feel like the Doom Fist is more of a gamble. Well, I think the Junkrat is going to be. You're going to get. Okay, yeah, you're definitely going to get more value out of the Junkrat in that one. Well played by his spy on that Junkrat. Was this a reverse sweep? No. It was 1-1 at some point. Or 2-1 at some point, yeah. Alright, checkmate jumps in. Doesn't get a whole lot of value. And Yaki went to the McCree as well. That's worth noting, right? So he's in the off angle. Oh, he still gets punched in. Window. Oh, he clipped the wall. Checkmate doing work. Checkmate doesn't really get a high amount of value, but Checkmate's just being annoying, right? He's just going in with the Doomfist over and over again and cycling himself. Neither of the team fire strike their own window. They fire strike each other's, of course, as is tradition. <laughs> uh, let's see what checkmate does here. Don't like this. They're going for the punch shutter. I feel like that's an ambitious play. Wall goes down. Good shatter by Sato. Gets the OG on the Rhine diff. Well, how, how was Aspire? I think Aspire's doing great. I think Aspire's been a really good player. Especially on that Tracer. His pulse bombs have been like next level. Alright. I do remember this though. Aspire's Junkrat tires though have a lot left to be desired. First of all, this tire is way too early. Second of all, the the pathing is just way too obvious, right? Like, I don't know what happened there, but that tire was was not great. Good B. Okay, double windows again. No one getting any value again. He's no Jake, yeah. Oh, checkmate. 
OG's just losing his shield so badly. Like, this Sim is just beaming down his shield. And Checkmate and Yaki aren't getting enough value. Like, Checkmate feels like he's always having to run away as soon as he punches in. And Yaki on the off angle isn't able to do as much as they like the Sim Metro, right? So it just feels like OG is just like slowly bleeding out when his shield is just getting beamed down by Hisu. Yeah, they're playing it so slow for having a deep. They just need to commit so that Checkmate can go in. It feels like they're baiting Checkmate when really... Checkmate should be baiting the rest of his team, you know what I mean? And coming in at a different angle. Like, Checkmate always seems to be the person going in first. Like, Checkmate's still not even in. Oh, that was an awkward shatter. Yeah, like, Checkmate literally didn't do anything this fight. Should be a pretty free tire under the those guys. Oh, it dies again. Yaki, it's a great shot. Oh, they might need that. They might have needed more from that tire. Yeah. Oh, Spy's getting a lot of. Spy's Junkrat seems really good outside of the tires. His tires could, could definitely be better. Wait, are they gonna win? They're gonna win, aren't they? Dude, the spy is just killing everyone. Wow, they're actually gonna win. Why do I hate Symmetra more than Sombra? Symmetra, f Symmetra feels dishonest. You guys know what I mean? Like it feels like you're not. You're, it feels like you're getting hard done by every time you lose to a Symmetra. Alright, let's see the Aspire Doomfist. Oh, interesting little tech. Not bad. Sim is just your five head for your three head. You're true, 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 true. Oh god, I'm plugging in my wireless mouse. Alright, what do we got? So the war goes down from the mayhem. Hisu's now actually on the Reaper. They got off the Symmetra. Ooh. OG goes down first. Lastro saved by the windowsill. Wobble wobble, motherfucker. Interesting by Gangnam Jin. <laughs> Gangnam Jin's really trying to get value out of that window after he messed it up. Watch Kaiju! Thank you very much for the Prime Gaming sub. Welcome to the fam. Gus, should Logix be concerned about a spy getting so much playtime? Yeah, probably. But, you know, that's just sort of the way it is. It's going to be on Logix to be able to perform when he gets into the server. The MYXL beats Spark? No. Oh! 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 Okay! Oh! Checkmate uses ult way too late in that fight, I think. Okay, they hit the cap. They beat them two times before. MYXL beat Spark. Yeah, well, MYXL beat them in the... I think it was the... They beat them in the May Melee when Spark weren't playing very well. And then they also beat them in the... Qualifiers for the June Joust when... I don't know what the fuck Spark were doing there. Yeah, Spark shit the bed again with their hero choices. I haven't watched Spark play yet from the weekend. So I need to go back and watch one of those matches. Aggressive window. I actually love this play. Gargo is going to jump off, so that's a lot of time wasted for the Florida Mayhem. I would go. If I was the Toronto Defiant, if I see them standing there and the David just jumped off the map, I would have gone. Shoshin, we're about to end Beast Fangs. 
I don't know how I feel about Yaki switching the Tracer as well. I feel like they just get way worse in the Brawl. Oh, he's with the Death Blossom. Okay, they get a Spire. Alright, Florida should get a pretty good recontest here. Spy switches to the Sim to get the TP back to point. I actually love this. Oh, Spy got pinned. Oh, he's fine. Boom. There it is. Toronto Defiant get the map 5 win. Toronto, yeah, Toronto just looked way better in the Brawl. Honestly, I think Florida looks really lost. Whenever they have to play the Brawl, they don't look good at it at all. Like, OG's, Reinhardt, and everyone else playing around it just doesn't seem very good. Like, the only times that I think um, Florida really had those big advantages were, like, when they played the Winston comps, and then, like, Toronto just played something weird. Right? Like, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't like Yaki swaps either. Like, I, I feel like if he just played the Tracer in a lot of situations, and then when they play the Brawl, he plays, like, the May, it would have been way better for them. It would have been way better for them. But, yeah, Florida Mayhem Woes continues. Toronto Defiant looking better. So, it's going to be an interesting weekend as we move on for both of these teams uh, in terms of just meta and also how they're going to be able to perform against better teams. So, I think Michelle did a lot better peeling for the backline, and Kyle would go did, in my opinion. I wasn't really looking up for that, but I can, I can see how you can come to that conclusion. So... Yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you found the review interesting. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Much love. See you all next time.